Hello students, welcome to our tutorial on gas wells. In this video, we're going to look at the question I left you guys with in the previous video. I hope you had time to try it. If you haven't, you can pause the video and try to work it out. Now, let's dive right ahead and see how we are supposed to look at this question. So, when we read through the question, we notice one key point. This is all happening at constant pressure. Now, of course, we should remember that when it comes to gas laws, we had one, one main law, which was the ideal gas equation. And then from the ideal gas equation, we ended up with three special cases of the, um, of the gas laws. And of course, all those were as a result of just a few conditions that were to be kept constant. Now, here, of course, we are seeing that what we're keeping constant is pressure. Now, of course, we should remember that the, the special case that has to do with pressure being kept constant, this has to be the Charles law. Now, what Charles law predicts is that if you have a gas of a certain volume enclosed in a container, then if you divide it, the volume by the temperature of the gas, what you'd get is going to be a constant. What this implies is if you had an initial volume V1 divided by an initial temperature T1, and then you changed this to some new volume, or let's say you change the temperature to some new temperature T2, in the process, the volume also changes to a new volume V2. The ratio that you get in the first place is supposed to be equal to the ratio you get after the change in temperature. So this is what we saw to be the consequence of Charles law. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, or volume over temperature will always give you a constant. This is, of course, if the system is closed. Now, in this case, what we've been told is that for this gas, initially, you have a volume V1 that is equal to 22 liters. And then this is seen to expand from 22 liters to some new volume V2 that is given as 53 liters. Now, this happened when the temperature changed from T1 equal to 27 degrees Celsius to a new value of temperature T2, which is given as, we go back to our question, 750 kelvins. Now, already we noticed that there's a difference in units. The first value of temperature is given in degrees Celsius. The second value of temperature is given in kelvins. If you want to work with the same unit preferred, the SI unit, and in this case, we're going to work with the Kelvins. It won't matter in this case whether you work with the degree Celsius or the Kelvins. The answer you get is still going to be the same, but I prefer to work with the SI unit, which is the Kelvin in this case. So we quickly convert from degree Celsius to Kelvins. You should be able to do this without really struggling. We know to say T1 will then be given by the temperature in degree Celsius plus 273. Of course, this means that T1 is going to end up as 300 kelvins. Okay, now what the question is asking us to find since we've obtained all the information, in the first place, the question is saying, is there a leak in the container? Now, of course, from Charles Law, what we should keep in mind is if there is no leak, because Charles Law is for a closed container. If there is no leak, the ratio between the volume and the temperature has to be constant. Meaning that if you divided the initial volume by the initial temperature, the value you'd get has to be the same as what you'd obtain if you divided the final volume divided by the final temperature. Now, if the two end up not to be the same, then we're going to conclude that there's a leak. In other words, what we're saying is, if V1 over T1 
is going to be equal to V2 over T2 as predicted by Chow's law, then the conclusion is no leak. Okay. But, but if we observe that V1 divided by T1 is not equal to V2 over T2, then the conclusion is going to be there is a leak in the system. So this is basically what we are going to work with. So the first step is we have to find the ratios. How do we do that? Well, very easy. We already know what V1 and T1, what they are. And we already know what V2 and T2 is. Now, how do we do that? Well, V1 is given as 22 liters. In this case, I won't bother to convert the liters. Of course, I can just keep them the way they are. Since I'm maintaining the, the same unit for the volume, it means that the ratio is not supposed to be the same. It shouldn't be affected. So we have 22 liters divided by the temperature. T1, remember I converted it from, de from degree Celsius to Kelvin. So I'm going to use the value in Kelvin, which is 300 Kelvin. I can even include this. We notice that the value we get is going to be 0 0.073 liters per Kelvin. Now, the next part, of course, this is V1 over T1. Next up, we obtain V2 over T2. And we see that the volume V2 is 53.6 liters divided by the temperature in Kelvins. And we obtain liters per Kelvin. Clearly, even though these values are almost the same, we notice that there's a slight difference. Observe what is happening here. So there is a slight difference in these values. So we conclude that V1 over T1 is not equal to V2 over T2. And because of this, there is a leak. Now, if there is a leak, the second part of the question is asking, if so, how much air has leaked in or out? Now, this is a part where they're saying leaked in or leaked out. Now, if you compare what we have, the initial value that we had, the ratio, or should I say the ratio that we had initially is greater than the ratio that we have after. So this means that there is a slight reduction in the, in the volume. So there is a leak out. Now, how do we determine how much has been lost? Let's see how we do that. Well, what we should keep in mind is if the two have to be the same, then when we get V1 divided by T1, this it is supposed to be equal to V2 over T2, but there is some volume, let's say V, that has been lost. So this is the volume of air lost. So let's just make sure that's what they're looking for. Yeah, so how much air has leaked out? So if we say this is the volume of air that has leaked out, 
we know to say these two are not equal, but they would be equal if we had V1 divided by T1 equal to the volume V2 that remained plus that volume that leaked out divided by the new temperature T2. So what I'm saying is if, if to the volume that remained, I just add that volume that was lost, then the ratios have to be equal now. I hope that makes sense now. Now, how do we work it out? See, here we already know what V1 and T1, what they are. Oh, so I can just make V, since the volume that is lost, that's what I'm trying to find. So I can just make this the subject of the formula and I'll cross multiply here so that I have V1 over T1 multiplying T2 equal to V2 plus V. So from here, V2 moves the other side. I now have V1 over T1 times T2 minus V2 equal to V. So here I can substitute so that I have V, the volume that has been that was lost, is equal to. I can write this one more time. Minus V2. So this will just be the volume V1, that is 22 liters, divided by the temperature T1, again in kelvins, times T2, which is 750, minus V2, so V2, remember what it was, 53.6 liters. Now, of course, you should notice that if we were to keep the units here, this is in liters, this is in kelvins, this is in kelvins, this is in liters, implying that the kelvin and the kelvin would cancel out. So from here, this reduces, V would be equal to, so this part would reduce to give you 55 liters, minus 53.6 liters, meaning the volume of the gas that is lost will be equal to 1.4 liters. Okay, so this was a very, very simple question. I hope you guys were able to follow through. I hope you saw the trick I used to obtain the volume of the gas that was lost. Okay, so at this point, I think this is where this, this, this video ends. I hope you guys were able to follow. If you found this video helpful, leave a like. Otherwise, in the next video, we're going to work out another simple question. You guys can, can, can try it out. All right, so we'll see you guys in the next video. This was your tutor.